All right, engineers, so we talked about the thyroid gland in super great detail. We covered things in so much detail that what I wanted to do in this video was just give us a nice little overview of that entire video. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So if you look here, we're gonna start the hypothalamus. So if you remember, in the hypothalamus, there were specific neurons, right, <clears throat> that were actually releasing this specific chemical. And what was that chemical that they were secreting? That chemical was called thyrotropin-releasing hormone. And if you want, the nucleus was called the paraventricular nucleus, right? What was that TRH doing? It was flowing through the hypophysial portal system, which was just the vascular connection right here, right? So here's a little vascular connection. It was flowing through that, where? Down into the anterior pituitary. And in the anterior pituitary, there was some specific cells right there. What were these cells here called? These were called thyrotropes, right? And these thyrotropes were responding to the TRH, and what were they secreting? They were secreting what's called thyroid stimulating hormone, right? So the first step was TRH, second step was TSH. What's the next thing? Well, now we have the thyroid gland. Well, what has to happen is the thyroid stimulating hormone is gonna circulate down through the blood to the thyroid gland, and then it's gonna act on the thyroid gland. When it acts on the thyroid gland, if you remember, we said that the overall result of this was the production of T3 and T4, which stands for our thyroid hormone, right? And then we said that it's transported in the bloodstream through the thyroxine binding globulins, right? And exerts its effects on various different target organs, which we're gonna talk about in a brief second here. What I wanna do is, so now that we understand this, what's called hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis, let's say something real quick about what happens whenever you have too much or too low. How does this affect it? So if you think about it for a second, Let's say that your TH levels are high, your thyroid hormone levels are high. What does that do? So let's draw here in red. It can actually circulate back up to the hypothalamus and exert what's called a negative feedback mechanism. What does that mean? It inhibits the paraventricular nucleus from making TRH. If you don't make a lot of TRH, what do you not make a lot of? TSH. If the TSH levels drop, do you make as much T3 and T4? No. Okay, so high T3 and T4, negative feedback, low TRH, low TSH, and then as a result, low T3 and T4. What about the opposite? If you have low T3 and T4, what is it gonna do? It's gonna exert a negative feedback mechanism on the uh, paraventricular nucleus, cause excessive amounts of TRH, produce excessive amounts of TSH, and then the high amounts of TSH will stimulate the increase in T3 and T4. So simple as that, all right. Now that we've done that, let's look at the effects of T3 and T4 on these various target organs. And like I said, we've already gone into all of them in great detail, so we're just gonna get the overall look. What was its effects on bone? It just promotes normal bone growth. So it promotes normal bone growth and maturation. So it helps with being able to promote normal bone growth and maturation. Guess what else it does? It promotes normal muscular system development and function. So it promotes normal muscular function and development. Okay, what about on just normal body cells? Do you remember it increased the basal metabolic rate by increasing the sodium potassium ATPase? So it increases your basal metabolic rate, it increases the oxygen usage, and then it actually can cause more metabolism, right? What are some of those metabolic pathways that it, it does? So it can actually do what's called lipolysis. It can actually do what's called glycolysis. And it can even do another process which is called gluconeogenesis. So it's actually a hyperglycemic hormone, right? Because it has the ability to increase blood glucose levels via gluconeogenesis. And it can break down substance because your basal metabolic rate's increasing. You want to break down a lot of glucose. So there's a lot of glycolysis. And helps to break down fat. Oh, one more that I want to mention here, which is really, really important, it is helps with what's called LDL uptake. So LDL is a cholesterol, it's called lipodensity, low density lipoprotein. And it actually is bad cholesterol. So if we, what it helps to do is get a lot of that bad cholesterol out of the blood and into our liver cells, right? So it helps to increase the LDL uptake, which helps to lower the actual cholesterols within the plasma. Okay, so that's its effects there. What does it do on the heart? It promotes normal cardiac output. So it promotes normal cardiac 
output, right? So cardiac output and different types of other functions, right? All right, what about in the brain? It promotes normal nerve development. So it promotes the actual increase in the synapses. So what does it do? It increases the synapses. It increases the myelination. It increases the dendrites. So all of these things are helping to do what? Increase the actual nervous system development and function. So it helps to be able to promote these activities. What does it do on the GI tract? It promotes normal GI motility and function. So it promotes motility, so contractions. So it promotes motility and secretions of the GI tract. And then again, what does it do to the skin? It promotes the normal hydration of the skin. So it promotes normal hydration of the skin, okay? So if we understand this, this is the basic overall function of thyroid hormone. So what happens? TRH is regulating the production of TSH by the anterior pituitary. TSH is acting on our thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormone. And thyroid hormone can produce bone growth and maturation, normal muscular function and development, increase our basal metabolic rate and oxygen usage, and it can undergo lipolysis mechanisms, glycolysis mechanisms, gluconeogenic mechanisms, and it can increase the uptake of LDLs, low-density lipoproteins, promotes normal cardiac output and pumping functions, increases the synapses and the myelination and the dendrites within our central nervous system, and it helps to promote normal motility and secretions of the gastrointestinal tract and promotes normal hydration of the skin tissue. So in, that, in, in a nutshell, that gives us the functions of thyroid hormone. And also, again, knowing what happens when there's elevated levels of thyroid hormone, what does it do? It works through a negative feedback mechanism to inhibit the paraventricular nucleus to stop making TRH. But if the thyroid hormone levels are low, it'll work through the negative feedback mechanism to stimulate the paraventricular nucleus to make TRH and then more TSH and then more thyroid hormone. All right, engineers, so this was an overview on the thyroid hormone. I hope this made sense. Till next time, engineers.